As the 20th century comes to a close, the impact of new technologies becomes more pronounced, but less well understood. Digital audio and video, cabled and wireless communications, intelligent networks, and the integration of these with computers will have impacts at least as great as the invention of automobiles, electric lights, recordings and movies at the close of the 19th century. I wrote a book called The Bagel Effect. Simply power and control are moving from the center of systems out towards the edges of systems. As the power and control move from the center out to the edges, you get a hole in what is the way that we normally look at systems, companies, organizations, schools, and things like that. And the internet is interesting because it's a perfect bagel. Internet has no center, no central administration at all. Everything that happens on the internet is by consensus of the netizens who are all at the edges of the system. And it really is a confluence of different trends. And it incorporates things that you have heard about, such as downsizing of organizations. And the average organization today is 30% smaller in terms of staff than it was 10 years ago. In business, the largest trend is a definite bagel effect. It's a move from supplier focus to customer focus. And those businesses which just 10 years ago would go to a customer and say, here's my list of goods and services, what can I sell you today? Are either totally out of business or have been consumed by other companies who have re-engineered their business strategy and now go to a customer and say, what can I do for you today? Where the business has to learn about the customer and the customer is in control. The difference between the digital age and the industrial age is in the industrial age there was only one option if you wanted to be successful economically and that was generally to locate in a large urban area with a lot of population and when they introduced the automobile people thought of the automobile as a horseless carriage in other words the car will replace the horse we didn't really understand that the impact of automobiles would be to create all of the new communities in which we live in other words urban centers, sub-urban centers, ex-urban centers. All of these were creations of cars. While the Industrial Revolution was very destructive for local community and families, the Digital Revolution has the potential to be very friendly and to return us to a pre-industrial kind of world where family and local community are much more important, very human-centric. The major trend that's going to affect cities is moving back from a global view, which was brought on by industrialization, to a local view. And in cities, that will be expressed by a new concentration on neighborhoods. The wonderful aspect from a social perspective of the new digital age, if you overlay the connectivity with the physical proximity of being able to have face-to-face -face communications, you have a new kind of community that didn't exist before. I call it a habicon or a connected community. Connected communities are a little bit like teen sex in the sense that everybody seems to be doing it, but few are actually doing it. Those that are doing it aren't doing it very well, but soon we figure we'll all do it and it'll be very fantastic. <laughs> I've had the opportunity to design and, um, and monitor such a community in Ontario where my colleagues and I uh, uh, raised $100 million and in 1997 we connected 100 families. The Intercom trial brings together companies, schools, governments and Stonehaven West, a new suburb in Newmarket, to form an interactive community with networked education, entertainment, healthcare, information, government services, transactions and communications. The purpose of the trial is not to find out what people can sell, but to find out what uh, users might want. It's very, very different. They went out with their neighbors 50% more frequently than the homes in the neighborhood that were not wired. And they invited their neighbors into their homes 200% more frequently. In North America and in our neighborhood, generally people can tell you the names of four or five of their neighbors. In the hundred homes that were wired, the residents could tell you the name of 25 
of their neighbors. People said, without exception, it was the friendliest community they had ever lived. Kim, I want you to meet Paul Hoffert, the man behind Interactive 97. Paul Hoffert, Kim Campbell. It's great I to know, see Paul, you, Kim. Yes, it. of course. We met uh, a few months back. We had breakfast in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And I told you about all the wonderful things that we're doing here in Canada. And you said, geez, if you could do something to help us out and promote some of the wonderful uh, things that are happening, that I should just give you a call. That's a dangerous oh, thing to say ever? to me. We're trying to make sure that the people drive the technology and not the technology driving the people. And we think that's the only thing that's really important. Individuals don't really care about a billion people. Regardless of what technology does, we are biologically programmed through our DNA to only trust about 20 people in our inner circle, our sort of extended family, and then about 200 people in our local community, which used to be the village. And, you know, that's hardwired. That doesn't matter what happens with industrialization, doesn't matter what happens with uh, digitization. The speed at which innovation gets introduced into our society has increased dramatically. And if you look at the graph, uh, you see that there's a problem. The problem is that our brain size doesn't increase dramatically. And the big change that will take another 20 or 30 years to, uh, to implement is to help people have less not more information the reason we don't read the manuals is this there's too many manuals i mean if you read all the manuals for everything that you have there's no time to have a life <laughs> the digital age is about letting people be wherever they want and the roads now which are just connections which can be in the middle of a farming community as well as a rural community or a big city bring to the average citizen the goods and services that the citizen used to have to travel for. So it reverses that whole trend of ripping people out of where they are, where their support structures and where their communities are, and it is extremely supportive of local communities.